So apparently, uh, some bad shit took place over in the aisles. Uh, you know, the sun never sets on the sporadic murder of public officials, I suppose. Longtime UK lawmaker stabbed to death in attack labeled terrorism. David Amess, a conservative member of parliament, was holding a meeting in his constituency at the time. Uh, he is the second politician killed in an attack in just over five years. Wow. Okay. Uh, really bad. Now, now I've heard from, from sources that this guy is a, is a terrible dude. However, and this, I'm, I'm, I'm being very sincere with this, and I hope you guys will agree with me, okay? Um, I don't think it's acceptable uh, uh, to engage in stochastic terrorism against political leaders that you don't like. I genuinely do not think that is a good thing to do. I think, I think, listen, that's a whole road, and it's not a good road, okay? Uh, you know, I, would, I think that he should be, I think that uh, uh, the only terrorism that I support is the terrorism of the free marketplace of ideas, by which I mean ratioing people on Twitter. For the second time in little more than five years, a British lawmaker meeting with constituents was killed in full view of the public Jesus this time in a genteel seaside town where the victim, a conservative member of parliament, was fatally stabbed on Friday inside a church. This opening paragraph feels like it could use some editing. The attack, which the authorities declared a terrorist attack early Saturday, stunned British, uh, Britain's political establishment, raising questions about the security of lawmakers at a time when the country is already on edge, unnerved by shortages of food and fuel, and frayed by a political culture that has become increasingly raw and combative in the aftermath of Brexit. David Amess, 69, <laughs> was a long-serving member of the House of Commons known for his soft-spoken manner and hard-line views on Brexit. He was engaged in the everyday political routine of meeting with constituents uh, when the attack occurred in Leon Sea on the mouth of the Thames about 40 miles east. It is very interesting how different locations sound over there in England, right? You know? Because over here in America, all of our locations are like Named in the past couple of century. Sorry, the teams. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Leon C. Teams. Thames. How? Thames? Thames. For this. And we make fun of American English? Thames. Really. Okay. Sure. Thames. Okay. The police said they had arrested a 25-year-old man on suspicion of murder and they had recovered a knife at the scene, but they did not identify the assailant. A tragic day, life tragically cut short, we know how it is, yada yada, uh, people who die get killed. Um, so I want to know more about the details of this. What was the political motive? Does anybody know? Are there any articles which detail that information a little bit better? This article is quite new, and I want to know. Maybe it would make more sense if you pronounced like an Englishman? Never. An Islamist, a migrant, apparently. Is that true? If that's the case, that's going to be... Uh, the guy has been charged? Okay, hold on. Um, Tory MP stabbed uh, perpetrator. There we go. What we know so far from the stabbing. Just a moment. Stabbed him several times. I'm told that when he went in for surgery, there were people waiting to see him. One of them literally got a knife out and began stabbing him. Local councillor John Lamb said it was then the attacker emerged from a small group of waiting constituents and attacked Sir David, stabbing him several times. Quote, I'm told that when he went in for a surgery, there were people waiting to see him, and one of them literally just got a knife out and began stabbing him. End quote. Police arrived within minutes and arrested a man. Right. Now, who's the suspect? Here, here we go. Uh, the 25-year-old man had been arrested immediately at the scene on suspicion of murder. Well, if he was stabbed to death in public, that seems like a pretty easy, pr pretty... Surgery just means meet the constituents. Oh, okay, okay. I was really confused by that. Okay, a surgery means... I was thinking, like, wait, wouldn't the surgery be after the stabbing? Wait, what? Okay, okay. So his surgery means meeting the constituents. All right, that's... Okay. Thank you for the translators in chat. Uh, this strange foreign society. Anyway, um, Whitehall officials have confirmed to the BPC that the suspect, who is being held at a London police stage under the Terrorism Act 2000, is Ali Harbi Ali, a British national of Somali heritage. This will spawn some good discourse. He was not on the MI5 subject of interest watch list. Offic officers have said they're not looking for anyone else. Um, this seems fairly cut and dry. He was stabbed to death in public. I mean, yeah. 
The BBC understands Mr. Ali was referred to the counter-terrorist prevent scheme a few years ago. Prevent is the UK's terrorism prevention program which aims to stop people from being radicalized. Okay, so he was a, 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 a sus- or like a, a potential, you know, for a while. Um, so, uh, what about motive, you know? What do police say? The attack has been declared a terrorist incident by the police. The early investigation revealed, quote, a potential motivation linked to Islamist extremism. Through what? I'd like to know. Mr. Ali was detained initially on suspicion of murder, but further detained under the Terrorism Act. Uh, kept him in... Do, do, do. What did the witnesses see? Uh, well, if it was done in public, it seems like it'd be a fairly direct thing to... Uh, right. It looks like we don't have much information released at the moment, but I'm going to make a couple of inferences. I think they have the right guy because he was stabbed in public. That seems like a, you know, uh, that, se that seems like a relatively easy case to close, you know? Uh, and he didn't run, yeah, yeah, so it's just, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna guess uh, this guy, there's probably some pretty significant evidence of this attack being religiously or politically motivated, uh, hence the Terrorism Act charge, you know? Um, that seems fairly likely to me. So I guess we have to talk about the discourse. We should probably preempt the discourse a little bit. Uh, they say there's a potential motivation linked to Islamist extremism. And, I mean, it's not like that's unlikely to be the case. It's very, very possible that that could be the case. As soon as it came out he was a Somali, he was at the front of every headline. Well, yeah, because this feeds into political narratives. There are plenty of people in England who want to fearmonger over the existence of immigrants or Muslims or whatever the hell else. And I'd like to talk with you guys about that if possible, because I would like to engage in my, uh, my classic vouch both sidesism, if I may. Um, and, and you're going to have to follow through with me here for a little bit, okay? If you will. I'd like to start with a fact. A couple facts, actually. First of all, by all available data that I can find, immigration from just the whole world is a net positive for both America and for England. Are there problems associated with it? Sure. Basically, any social policy is going to involve some problems, for sure. But as a net, as a whole, the benefits to the economy from immigration have been largely understated, and the harms done to society through crime or social discohesion or whatever else, they're largely overstated. So with that being said, I, I want those positions front and center, okay? I want those positions front and center so that nobody can accuse me of not believing those two things. With those being acknowledged, I do think that there are legitimate concerns about Islamic extremism. I think that is a real thing, uh, a real problem, and I think that it's worth talking about. And I think the left should talk about it too, because if we don't, the only people talking about it will be on the far right. And let me tell you how that conversation takes place, by the way. Uh, and this is what's been happening for years, you know, where there will be issues with Islamic extremism, you know, in, in the West, and it'll get brought up. And conservatives will say that they're going to destroy our society, they're going to kill us all. And lefties will say there's no problem whatsoever. Now, there are evident problems. So if you take some random person in the center, what are you going to choose? Somebody who pretends a problem isn't there when it clearly is? Or somebody who is at least acknowledging that problem? I think it's important for us to at least have a take on this. Like with Charlie Hebdo. Remember, uh, remember uh, uh, the whole Charlie Hebdo thing? You know, I remember this very specifically because there was this huge, huge... Now, I could be misremembering, but like... If I, if the details are correct, this was a cartoon publication from a fairly racist cartoonist, and they were murdered uh, in a shooting, a mass shooting, by angry Islamic extremists, correct? Yes, the beheading of the French teacher as well, the London Bridge, right, right, yeah. Uh, and, and now the publication here, I think they were a racist Islamic publication, but I don't think Islamophobia warrants the death sentence via terrorist attack and mass shooting, you know? Um, so, yeah, much in the same way that I wouldn't want my Anglophobia to make British people feel that it's okay for them to kill me in public. Uh, we have to be, you know, a little more 
a little more amicable than that. Yes, Charlie Hebdo portrayed Allah in an image which is against Islam, which, by the way, you can, um, you can, uh, uh, you can call me Islamophobic for this, but I give about a mu as much of a fuck about people disrespecting Muslims by portraying Allah as I do people disrespecting Christians by floating a Bible in piss. To which my is like, no, I don't care at all. Oh, sorry, Muhammad. Muhammad, not Allah. Muhammad, not Allah. Sorry, sorry. Muhammad, not Allah. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care at all. Not even slightly. If your feelings are hurt, I don't care. Cry about it. Religious piss, baby. Especially if you want to kill people over it. Shh, shh, shh. So with this, um, Advashe Charlie Hebdo is racist. I didn't, didn't they do some like, Islamophobic stuff. It wasn't just portraying. Uh, I could be misremembered. I'm pretty sure they. It wasn't just like religious mockery. It was like bordering on like Islamophobia with like, you know, caricatures of like Arab people or whatever. They were against all religions. I would have to look into it. Look, this is entirely beside the point. By the way, I, I don't care about the moral virtue of this publication. What I'm talking about is the fact that Islamic extremism is a thing which has, there are problems associated with it. Can we agree on that? Now let's move on. Thank you. Okay. With all that being said, we need to talk about Islamic extremism fairly and reasonably uh, from a left perspective, okay? Now, I don't like religion. I don't like religion uh, a as a concept. I'm not a big fan of what it does to people like from an epistemic perspective. I don't like the justifications people engage in. Uh, uh, as a product of religion, I don't think it leads to good social norms, okay? If you're religious, you may practice your faith, okay? I also don't like Tekken, but you can play Tekken. I don't know. Just, shh, shh, just whatever. Um, but there are differences in the ways that different religious groups manifest their power, okay? So, for example, Jewish people. As far as I can tell, Jewish people uh, harm the world uh, by, um, uh, 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 you know, getting into Hollywood at disproportionate rates and then making uh, uh, unfunny movies. That's how they get back at Western society, you know? Uh, they, uh, Adam Sandler, you know, they make unfunny movies sometimes. Uh, then they make a lot of other funny movies. Uh, but, you know, the unfunny ones still sting. I think that's the harm they're doing. Holy shit, Vosh, stop. The joke is that they don't really contribute much to social harm as a religious group in the broader West. Shut up. Jesus, Christians in the United States don't do, uh, you know, well, they do plenty of terrorism, but the real threat of Christians in the United States really comes from religious fundamentalists uh, controlling political policy. And from that, we get things like the Iraq War or denying climate change, which are worse than terrorism because terrorism usually kills hundreds of people, and those things kill millions to, depending on how climate change pans out, billions of people. So I'd say that's a couple steps above. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, white Christian evangelicals are the most dangerous terrorist group on the planet now and through all of human history. There has never been a group of people more willing and more politically capable of enacting political violence on the rest of the world. Uh, it never, not, not even close. I mean, not even remotely close. And then you have Muslims. And here in the United States, Muslims for the most part are more progressive than a lot of Christians are. There are Islamic extremists, but Islamic extremism is generally considered to be more of a thing in Europe because they more felt the effects of the Syrian refugee crisis, which elevated the discourse somewhat. And, um, and, and I think it's worth considering stuff like this. So I want to, uh, a lot aren't though. On average, I'm pretty sure Muslims in America have, um, slightly more progressive views than Christians in America because Christians are weighed down by fundamental, by fundamentalists evangelicals. Uh, yeah, in, in the U.S. I said in the U.S. Uh, worldwide, this is not the case. But over in Europe, you know, uh, you have the Syrian refugee crisis, and this elevates a lot of discourse uh, over there that is not, uh, not heard over here in the same way. American fear-mongering about Muslims was like, how close can people build a mosque to the ground zero site in New York? That was American fear-mongering about Muslims, you know? Whereas fear-mongering about Muslims in many European countries was millions of people who are very politically right-wing are going to be entering our continent soon. What do we do about that? Now, while I don't think the fear-mongering about that was warranted, I understand some concern about how a very religiously radical, a very conservative, a very reactionary group, uh, many Muslims in the Middle East, you know, uh, uh, 
how they might integrate into European countries. And of course, this killing was evidently done by a Somalian Muslim refugee. So that, you know, that's going to ring a lot of alarm bells. Vosh, I think you're forgetting the literal murders on Muslims after 9-11. No, I'm saying the fear-mongering that took place, like what people were talking about. Like, like what, like in America, when people are talking about the effects Muslims are having on America, it was like they're building mosques. Like, because nothing fucking happened after 9-11, you know? But over in Europe, you know, he was a national and a refugee. Sorry, not a refugee, a national. My apologies. God, we're getting into it. <sighs> not, not a refugee, a national. My apologies. The Sam Harris arc. We haven't even gotten to my fucking position. Let's get to my position, okay? I'm on two minds on this. We have to fight back against conservative fear-mongering. But we have to acknowledge that there are going to be issues with what I guess could be described as a civilizational clash between the interests and the political biases of much of the Islamic world and the interests and the biases of the non-Islamic European world. This is a true thing. This is a true thing that is, that is a thing that is real and that we should consider and that we should think about. And in cases like this, you know, we'll learn more about the specifics of this killing in the coming days, I am sure. But when we talk about the discourse that's going to erupt from this, we need to find ways of acknowledging potential problems. So how do we do that besides just downplaying it? Well, I think one of the things that we can do, first and foremost, is promote the fact that the reason Islam is so reactionary is because so many Muslims come from countries that are politically fucked. Highly reactionary political views are positively correlated to societies with great degrees of instability. Radicalization and fear-mongering uh, against these groups will only instigate further radicalization on their part. This is one of the goals of Al-Qaeda, by the way, one of their stated goals. 9-11 exacerbated anti-Muslim sentiments in America. And what does that make America do? We fucking invaded Iraq. And what has that led to, folks? So many of these problems come about because we, are, we dislike Muslims, we act poorly against them, which worsens their material conditions, and as their material conditions are made worse, their likelihood, their propensity towards violence and radicalization increases. And what would they be radicalized besides Islam? If America hates Islam anyway, and America is the one doing this to their country, it makes sense that that would be the radicalizing force that they would turn to. We see a similar problem over in Europe as well. A lot of European countries are pretty fucking Islamophobic. France in particular is seeing a huge surge of Islamophobic sentiment right now. And the fear-mongering over Muslims is taking place in countries all over the place, including England, which didn't even take, like, many refugees from the Syrian migrant crisis. So, like, it's, it's all over the place. But the more you feed into that hate, the more likely you are to push out of society people who are already prone to radicalization. Like, think about that. Imagine that you're like a Somali national, and you come over to the United Kingdom, and what, which, which, which version of the United Kingdom do you think is more likely to turn you into an Islamic militant? One which accepts you and loves you for who you are, or one which is constantly fearful and paranoid towards you because of your religious, political, or national uh, demographics. The latter will always lead to greater radicalization. 100%. Vosh, one third of UK and French Muslims literally want to replace the law with Sharia. Can you provide me a poll? Because I've seen polling like that, and the polling uh, 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 that I have seen is more that they want to have a separate legal system that supervises religious law, not that they want to be separate from like regular civil law. They don't want to like not abide by British law. They want to also have courts that prescribe religious law. That's what I understand. In which case, we have informal versions of that in societies all across the country. Do we not have that in like the Bible Belt? The church is the local Sharia court. If you disgrace the church, if you betray your family, if you come out as gay or whatever else, you'll be socially stigmatized, and you can be punished by those churches. And Jews have that as well, and that's very bad. It is, but there's a big difference between religious people doing religious shit and Muslims want to overthrow the government and institute a theocratic regime. Those are two very, very, very different things, and it's very important to keep that in mind, okay?
So make sure to distinguish those things. Not to mention, by the way, this stuff fades with time. It takes decades and decades and decades for, uh, 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 for religious extremism, or at least strong religious beliefs, to sort of be moderated by the average belief system uh, in a country that you move to. We've seen this in the United States, you know? The, the Irish descendants here in America aren't having 16 kids and beating their wives every night anymore. They're having eight and beating half of their wives. I don't know. It's, there's a moderating force uh, associated with assimilation, and sometimes that takes time. But that process of assimilation is slowed significantly uh, when you stigmatize these groups. You understand? When you stigmatize these groups, you make it harder for them to assimilate because you're actively rejecting them from the systems that you're trying to get them to assimilate into. That is just not how this shit works. But you know, with all of that being said, I think the left should be a little bit more comfortable with something. I, and I'll say it, you know, fuck Islam. I say fuck Christianity, don't I? Fuck Islam, yeah. I think that Islam leads plenty of people towards regressive political views. I don't like religion. I don't like the meta-ethical prescriptions made. Fuck it, yeah. You, you weird champ me? Would any of you weird champ me if I said fuck Christianity? Zero percent of you would. Please, zero percent of you would. No, of course you wouldn't. Do you think Islam, do you, do you, do you patronize them? What is this bigotry of low expectations? You think, oh, what, because Islam is done in another continent more so than this? But no, 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 no. The negative effects of religions, some more so than others, are universally felt. And it's something that we should be willing to acknowledge. Now, that doesn't mean the same thing as fuck Muslims, okay? There are many Christians who I know and love. Fuck Christianity, but there are many Christians who I know and love, and I support their right to practice their religion. And even though I don't get the whole blood to wine, sacrament, little biscuit, whatever the fuck they're doing, I respect the right to build their churches, to live their lives. I think it's important to them, and if it's important to them, that it's important to me that they get to be able to do it, okay? And I feel the same way about Muslims, and I feel the same way about Jews and Hindus, even though I care no more for their religions than I do any others. You all understand? This is the ubiquitous attitude that I feel we should adopt. Or if you're comfortable saying fuck Christianity, and then conservatives are like, hey, you know, an Islamic extremist killed one of our politicians, and you're like, well, there's nothing wrong with Islam. And don't pretend you don't see that on Twitter sometimes from the left, by the way. That's a little weird, don't you think? Don't you think that's a little weird? Like, yeah, it's like the weird defensiveness. And by the way, Islam does not need your defense. Muslims need your defense. They need a lot of defense, okay? Because they're getting three like shit all over the place. Islam doesn't. Islam has like billions of people who believe in it, okay? The, the, it's, really, it's, it's not some tiny little, you know, fringe religion and culture that will die it, like a little candle flame that if you know, it's no, 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 no. It's a massive geopolitical force. Uh, protect the people, but be willing to criticize the, the institutions, okay? Okay, 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 okay. People don't make that distinction between Islam as a religion and Muslims, though. Yeah, and we need to. There's a big old difference. Big old difference between uh, attacking systems and attacking people. I hope you all would recognize that. I mean, my God, that's been like the whole thing I've been advocating for this entire time, you know? The Netherlands here is also pretty Islamophobic. Isn't, uh, isn't Denmark the really Islamophobic one? Or am I misremembering? There was some, it was, it was one of those countries where you can only have so and so many minorities per, per neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. Do you think it's worthy to defend the misrepresentation of the religion? Like when people say something is one thing, but they have no idea about it. I've said this before, and every time I say this, people seethe at me. They get so mad at me, but I believe this down to the core of my being. I really do not believe that religious text influences the behavior of religious people that much. Christians, Muslims, Hindus, their text says very different things. And what happens when you give them political power? They form fascist regimes. They form states that repress minorities of different groups. Their rhetoric ends up looking very fucking similar. Seriously, look at the Hindu nationalists over in India. Like, everything you think you know about, like, Hinduism. It's like, oh, wow, well, tur turns out that geopolitical forces kind of supersede, <laughs> kind of supersede whatever the text of your religion is. And by the way, Talk to a Christian. They haven't read the Bible. Muslims, they haven't read the Quran. Okay? They don't. 
Nobody follows all these fucking rules. They just believe and do whatever is socially normalized by the religious groups within their society, which is why there are a million rules in the Bible and Christians follow maybe three of them, okay? That was an arbitrary decision made to make their lives better. Because if they followed all, like, one million of them, then their lives would suck because, yeah. We're doing the Trump voice? We're doing the Trump voice, baby. As a Christian, I literally do not know a Christian who's not read the Bible. Well, then Christians sure do act like they've never read the Bible. Oh no, the people are being mad at me. Again. Oh, hey, President Sunday. What's up? I don't know why you don't have a blue name. Uh, except the Amish, the only real Christians. True! Um, yeah. I I'm sorry, guys. You just... You do know that, like, all religious people, like, every single one of them, like, every single last one of them, don't follow their text consistently, right? You do, you do know that, right? Like, literally everyone on Earth, okay? Like, all of them, all the time, okay? None of them follow their rules consistently, all right? Like, zero of them. <laughs> Just because you've gone to Bible study does not mean that you follow the rules of the Bible consistently. I've talked to religious people, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Hindu. I had a very diverse upbringing, okay? And it's always the same excuse. Because I'd have these arguments when I was an edgy fucking atheist with them too. And it would be, hey, I noticed these rules exist in your text, but you don't follow them. What's up with that? And they'd be like, oh, well, yeah. Well, that was more of a symbolic or metaphorical thing, you know? Like... That wasn't really like a literal rule written by God, you know? And then you'll like get them on something they do care about. Like Jewish people, they wear the hats or like, uh, you know, Christians with this or the other. And they'll be like, well, yeah, you have to do that. Or you'll go to hell. It's like, oh, yeah, come on. Um, it's, it's totally arbitrary what rules people do and don't follow. And it's the same with a lot of ethical systems, okay? People will just adopt whatever's convenient for them. I, yeah. They follow their parents, not their text. Yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. There's actually some good research on lay religion in the Middle Ages, which everyone understands is incredibly pious, but actually common people were fairly indifferent. Let me put it another way, okay? Has anyone else noticed that the Taliban, religious extremists who are so committed to Islam that they will die for it, or ISIS fighters who want to establish a caliphate? I mean, these people are the most diehard Muslims in the world. Have you noticed we, like, constantly see videos of them breaking their own religious laws? Like, all the time? Fucking, didn't Bin Laden have porn on his computer? Like, all the time? Like, these are the most devout and dedicated groups, and they can't follow it? Not even close? Like, nobody follows these fucking rules, guys. People have strong emotional attachments to cultural norms that they grew up with. Religion is a part of that. But it does not mean that these cultural norms, like, override broader geopolitical tendencies. Capitalists do capitalism, fascists do fascism, and reactionary values are a product of unstable societies. It's that simple every time it's that simple so you want muslims to be progressive bring them over to progressive countries you want christians to be more regressive send them over to more regressive countries simple as that make people's lives worse and they'll behave worse make people's lives better and they'll behave better every time all the time are there little differences and like maybe say, well i guess different religions wear different hats and there are different types of alcohol and food they get to eat or not eat but in a big broad geopolitical ethical sense I think that for the most part, things are determined by geopolitics far more, material conditions far more than the actual text that you subscribe to. Because then if you ask that, like, well, what text? Because I've read enough of the Quran to know you don't follow every rule, motherfucker. I've read enough of the Bible to know you don't follow every rule. So who decided which groups of rules you've arbitrarily decided are okay to follow? And then they'll do some bullshit. Well, this is all metaphor, but this isn't take. And then you're like, all right, okay, fine, 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 fine. Just if you believe in God, live your life. I don't give a fuck. But I will not perpetuate this idea that Islam is like this inherently barbaric religion because Muslims in countries that are barbaric by material condition practice some degrees of barbarism. Okay? I will not essentialize that behavior to their religious practices when I live in a country where Muslims are relatively progressive. I refuse to do that. And no matter how attached you are to the sanctity of your religious beliefs, I will not allow your sanctity to drag me down to the conservative argument, where Islam is inherently bad and Christianity is inherently good. This, this Sam Harris-esque position that the reason we have problems with Muslims isn't because of the myriad political systems or economic systems that disenfranchise the countries they tend to live in, but rather it's like, the Quran's just bad, dude. It's because, like, Muhammad was a warlord, dude. 
as if there weren't bad things being justified in the New and Old Testaments. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I got, you know, your hippie Jesus dude, okay? But take a look at the Crusades, all right? I know what you motherfuckers been up to. Yeah, the Sp the... The Spaniards and the Italians were being extremely Christian when they did all that shit, you know? They were they were very much following the practices of Jesus Christ, you know? Or were they just doing imperialism because they could? Why, my friends, why did the slave owners teach Protestantism to the slaves? Did they care about the immortal soul of the people they bought and sold as property? No! The Protestant Work ethic, consistent element of Protestant teachings here in the States, says that hard work makes you more holy. You're more likely to go to heaven the harder you work. And what ideology could one better teach to slaves? Hey guys, you're more likely to go to heaven if you work really hard for me as a slave. And your reward will be in heaven. Don't worry, God will pick up the tab. Uh, 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 it's not my job. You know, are you sure that's the sole reason? It's a pretty big part of it. Yeah. You don't think there's any like reason at all why versions of Christianity that were taught to the underclasses essentialized the moral worth of hard work for your betters. They did the same thing to the serfs over in feudal society. You think like you think that was a coincidence? If you read the entire Bible, I don't think much of it is about how working super hard makes it more likely that you'll go to heaven. It's a lot of other shit in there, but I know what people in the peasantry were being taught. Motherfuckers couldn't read Latin, so they're being taught, you know, oh yeah, dude, dude, I know the system's like unfair, dude, but the harder you work for your, uh, for your, your nobility who just happen to be friends with the priest class, dude, you'll go to heaven, brah. Pay no attention to the fact that there's a deep connection between the state, which benefits from the hard work of the serfs, and the religious uh, aristocracy, and the fact that the Pope has ties to like every fucking feudal country in Europe. Pay, pay no attention uh, to the astounding coincidence that we're primarily trying to indoctrinate you into religious values that coincide with the economic needs of your betters, you know? I am, of course, simplifying. Uh, but what I'm saying is true. I, I, obviously, there's more nuance to this big history, you know, tirade, but yeah. Very nice. My mom's husband literally told me that leaving your job for a better one was an affront to God because he provided you that job and leaving would be disrespectful. There's a lot of wacky shit Christians will justify with like the, you know, it's disrespectful. They do this with trans people, you know, God gave you this body uh, as well. It's a pretty common one, you know. There's this really weird relationship between American Christianity and you should be satisfied with what you have. Which, again, is really odd because Jesus was a pretty strong advocate against a lot of the oppressive behavior that he saw in his, you know, in his community back in the day, but, yeah. Dude, total coincidence, by the way, that the version of Christianity promoted by the most powerful Christians in this country is one that benefits the capitalist class, and also the Christians that promote it are either politicians or multimillionaire, like, mega-pastors. Dude! All right, sorry, I'm going to stop saying dude. It's just, I think it's a very funny way of mocking people's dishonest insistence.